<clears throat> I wanted to talk about my my upbringing. I haven't done it before. Um, anyway, I grew up on the uh, Sicilian side of the family. And at that time, actually their whole lives, uh, they didn't know that they had a Jewish heritage. So they were involved with the Catholic Church. Now, my father was Jewish, and my mother was a very old-fashioned woman, believing that the child should be brought up in the religion of their father. So she waited and waited for him to bring me up in his religion, Judaism. But he didn't. He had all kinds of problems and traumas uh, with his relatives and financial things uh, that I don't want to go into. Anyway, so finally, um, you know, one of the neighbors was saying, look, why don't you let us take her to church with us? She should have some religion. And before that, um, People in my in the Sicilian side of the family were constantly saying to my mother, uh, "You need to get her baptized." Um, the same thing as the neighbors said, she needs to have some kind of religion. It's just a blessing. That's all. Just a blessing. So my mother listened to that for a long time, and then finally she said yes. So. Um, her friend uh, and her friend's husband, neighbors, in Newark, New Jersey, became my my godparents, and we were in uh, visiting New Jersey at the time. Otherwise, you know, we were in living in Miami Beach most of the year. Anyway, so she had waited so long that I was then three and a half years old. So you can imagine taking a three and a half year old who doesn't know what's going on and all of a sudden she's in a church and never been in a church before and you know this enormous building and this man there with a robe and 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 the child gets picked up and 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 they're turning her you know like this and and holding her over this big marble thing with water on it in it and and so you know I started you know screaming and crying and anyway they they you know poured the water on my forehead and you know said the blessing and, and then they you know put me put me back down standing on on the floor there you know the only time I had seen some living thing held over a, a body of water was when my family uh, had been crabbing in a rowboat and they brought home these live crabs and then they were taking them and throwing them into the boiling water so I didn't know what was going on and I was a sensitive quiet delicate little thing anyway okay so that was my baptism in the Catholic Church so after that my mother finally listened to the neighbor in Miami Beach South Beach and she let me go to church with the neighbor and her family. The church was one and a half blocks away. We walked there. So of course I had I had Christmases. And besides that, we lived across the street from the bay, and also across the street was the Elks Club. And they like to do many things for the community and for the children in the community. So so every Christmas they had this party with with, you know free toys and there was some uh, magician and and food and everything you know it was great um, so and you know of course my mother took me to see Santa Claus and and downtown Miami had these department this department store Richards and they had the most magnificent decorations you know the the moving the moving uh, <laughs> replicas of people you know and all the lights and everything in the rain there well, it was it was wonderful and one christmas um i i woke up anxious to see what was under the tree 
and I went in the living room of our little apartment and there was a toy piano. You know those little ones like, like this and they have a very tin sound and not just that but on top of the toy piano was a doll, a beautiful doll sitting on the piano. And the reason my mother had bought me the toy piano is because um, Liberace was on TV back then. He's a famous uh, piano player, concert pianist. And I used to, for some reason, I used to watch him every morning and I used to, you know, go like this and pretend to be playing a piano. So that's why she got me that. Anyway, so many years celebrating Christmas and um, all my friends were Jewish, most of them. And, and an interesting thing is, back then, this was, this was the 50s and before the 50s, no Jewish person was allowed to live beyond north of 5th Street. So my mother and I lived in my uncle's apartment building on 7th Street. My father had a business, a very um, popular business on 5th Street. So, you know, he was like two blocks away in his business. And, but this, this thing about no Jews allowed to live beyond north of 5th Street continued into the 50s and then then it started dissipating and things changed because you know um, Jews were bringing business into Miami and they were bringing customers in, into Miami Beach so things did change but I thought that was interesting my father had his business right right on the border you know like couldn't live beyond 5th Street we had his business right there so he could get customers from south of 5th Street and north of 5th Street. Anyway, let's uh, speed this up to the future. So when I became a teenager, I went to many, many different types of churches. Um, African Methodist Epis Episcopal, Baptist, um, Pentecostal and I continued that for many years um, and when I was 19 I lived in a um, what do you call that a, commu a commune a religious commune and um, you know they believed that you should be doing a reading or studying or preaching all the time and after a month there I thought you know it was a little bit too um, I don't know, like like the military, you weren't allowed to even sit and look out a window for five minutes or anything. You always had to be, you know, preaching or studying, you know, something like that. So I left there after a month, and I continued many years, you know, going to different churches. I even went back to the Catholic Church because, you know, they have this beautiful artwork in there, and it's very peaceful. And after many years, you have the whole service and the prayers uh, memorized, the Apostles' Creed and all that. And later on in my, um, in my 40s, uh, I watched a TV show called Zola Levitt Presents. And it was so interesting. It was about the uh, Jewish roots of, of Christianity. And I was absolutely fascinated. So then I started going to Messianic uh, synagogues, which um, traditional Jews think is terrible because, you know, they, they believe that the Almighty is one. You know, he's not separated into two or three. So, but anyway, I, um, I went to various ones and I learned a lot. And then the years passed, and I started hearing a lot of uh, bad things about Islam. And I thought, well, this can't be. It's a major religion. So I, I decided to read the, the Quran, the whole thing, carefully. Even the little comments you know, on the bottom, the references. 
and I specifically had in my mind if there's something bad in here I want to find it and I I couldn't find anything bad so then I started visiting mosques and little by little you know with all my studies I started seeing that you know when you actually read the books of these three Abrahamic religions Judaism Christianity, Islam, that they're all they're all saying the same basic things, you know, to obey the Almighty, to to care for your fellow human being, not not to murder, you know, to give to charity, to, to raise your children, you know, with the rules of the Almighty, all these same same things. So so <laughs> I I I think that, in a way, um, I am blessed because I don't have any bad feelings about any of those groups. I would never, never say anything bad about any of those groups because I know them, I've lived them, I've studied them. And the interesting thing is I have relatives that are Christian, uh, also Protestant Christian, Catholic Christian, and and Jewish, and and Muslim, and I also have uh, relatives. Some of them were like you know like atheists, and right now there's only a, one atheist that I know left in the family. The others have gone on to their reward in heaven. But so out of all these relatives guess which one behaves the best the one who's the most kind the one who has self-discipline the one who has a very steady orderly life which one the atheist isn't that something <laughs> anyway I've been baptized so many times in all these different churches and then, and then in 2015, I decided to look more closely to um, the ship's manifest records of my grandmother and my two aunts and uncle who came over in, let me see, 1909 from Sicily. So it's the Ellis Island Statue of Liberty Foundation website. And there was something on there, you know, with my, my grandmother's name there, you know, where she's from, et cetera, et cetera. There was something on there. I just, I couldn't really see clearly. And it was her mother's name. So this would be my grandmother. So I sent away for it. And... And I took one of these, and when it arrived, you know, uh, I looked at it really carefully. Because it's very hard to tell online, so I looked at it very carefully, and there it was. A Jewish surname of my great-grandmother. Okay. So that, that doesn't mean that I was half Jewish anymore, like I thought I was. And by the way, my Jewish friends when I were growing up, they were very nice to be me. Nobody bullied me. There was some other kids in the neighborhood that bullied me, but but never never the Jewish people. So, but they didn't include me in anything religious. But they came over and helped me <laughs> decorate the Christmas tree. Isn't that something? So. What happened after that? Oh, I said I was baptized so many times, and um, you know it's very hard for uh, Jews. The Jewish religion believes that they should not convert anyone unless they're absolutely sure they're serious about conversion. So, you know, you go to classes first, and you make sure you know what you're getting into all the commandments and everything, and after that. Um, you know, you go through a ceremony, you um, go to a mikvah, which is a, you know, like a, like a mini pool, and you dunk in there, it's symbolic. 
you know, starting a new life, washing away the old, old life. So I did all that because, you know, I, I didn't want there to be any question if I a attend a synagogue, you know, am I Jewish or not? Maybe they, maybe they would think, oh, you know, so she found a relative, you know, big deal. She didn't grow up in a Jewish home and, you know, she doesn't know what she, any of the rules and no. So I didn't, I didn't uh, want to chance any of that. So I went through the uh, cons conservative, uh, conversion in the synagogue and so nobody can say anything I can participate you know wanted to make sure so I want you to know where I'm coming from and I also want you to know that in the books of the prophets in the Bible they're always talking about in the end of the world the whole, all nations will come to Jerusalem and they will worship. And, and it mentions, you know, the Jewish holidays that they, the biblical holidays, they will worship. So this means in the future, I, all people will be following the same religion. So then doesn't that mean everybody's a future Jew? And here's another thing to think about. Since the Garden of Eden is in Iraq, which in the ancient name of that place is uh, Chaldea, and that's an Arab country. So if the Garden of Eden is in an Arab country, aren't we all Arabs? So when you start s studying all these details, it just seems so, so illogical to have uh, separations be between people. I mean, we're just we're just closer in soul and spirit and mind and in and, and reality than than we think. Anyway, since this is a, a day when many people are remembering the birth of the Jewish rabbi in uh, in Bethlehem. I thought I would read a prayer from my new prayer book. And it's the first prayer in the book. It's a week it's for a weekday prayer. We are called unto life, destiny uncertain. Yet we offer thanks for what we know, for health and healing, for labor and repose for renewal of beauty in earth and sky, for that blend of human holy which inspires compassion, and for hope, eternal, promising light, for life, for health, for hope, for beautiful, bountiful blessing, all praise to the source of being. Barukata Adonai, Mekor Nefesh Kol Hai. Blessed are you, Lord, the source of all being. And I wish you all, I'm so sentimental, I wish you all beautiful holidays.